So in this video we're going to look again at rates of change, but we're going to do it for more realistic situations where the lines on the graph aren't straight all the time. Here's a graph showing the displacement of a falling object, and you can see that it's definitely not a straight line. The gradient of it increases as the elapsed time increases, but that makes sense because the thing's accelerating, and the gradient represents the velocity. Let's imagine that we wanted to find the velocity at time equals 2 seconds, but not the average velocity over a certain time interval, but an instantaneous velocity. And to do that, we need to find the gradient, not of part of the curve, because it's a curve, but of the tangent to the curve, which is shown in black. We'd get a change in displacement and a change in time, divide one by the other to find the gradient. Now, we don't want to be drawing tangents to curves all the time, so is there a better way of doing this? Well, we can look at the displacements at different times and see what that can tell us. These numbers are the coordinates on the graph, so after time 2 seconds it's travelled 19.6 metres, after time 4 seconds it's travelled 78.4, and so forth. And let's concentrate on time 2, because that's where we want to know our answer. And now let's join that up to time 4 seconds. Why have we done that? What we're going to do is calculate an average velocity over that 2 second period, which we can easily do, because it's just the gradient of the green line. Now at this point you might say, why are we bothering to do that? We want the gradient of the black line. Well, just bear with us, and uh, hopefully it'll become clear as we go along. So the gradient of that line is the change in displacement divided by the change in time. So that's the difference between 78.4 and 19.6 divided by the difference between 4 and 2. And you get an answer for the gradient of that green line of a nearly 30 metres per second. But that's not a very good approximation to the gradient of the black line. How do we get a better one? Well, we can shrink the time interval that we're looking over. So this red line is the same process repeated, but this time we're doing it for a smaller time interval. And once again, here's another one, a smaller time interval again, gets the yellow line, and you can see that the answers to the gradients, which are the average velocities over that time period, are reducing. And you can see from the graph that as we go from the green line to the red line to the yellow line, the gradients are decreasing and they're becoming closer to the gradient of the black line, which is what we actually want to calculate. So if we could shrink the time interval enough, would we actually get to a magic number which corresponds to the gradient of the black line? Well, to do so, you'd have to shrink the time interval down to zero. That's not easy to do by drawing loads of tangents, and it would get very messy, and we're not going to do that. So, is there a way of doing that without drawing loads of tangent lines? And yes, there is, and we're going to do it algebraically. Here's the same graph with all the numbers stripped off, and what we do need to know is the function of the curve. So this equation says that the displacement at time t is proportional to the elapsed time squared, and that proportionality can be turned into an equal sign with a constant of proportionality multiplying the t squared. In the numbers that we used, k was equal to 4.9, which gives a fairly good approximation to what really goes on. Now, let's pick two points, as we did before. One of them is, represents time t, and one of them represents a time delta t later where delta, remember, just means a change in. Then what we have is we have a displacement at time t, which is given by the function, and a displacement at time delta t later, which is also given by the function, but this time, instead of t squared, it's the slightly later time squared. How does that help? Well, we can calculate the gradient of the line between the two points on the graph. And to do that, we need delta x, the change in displacement, which we can work out from the two values of x, and delta t, which we've already labeled on the graph is delta t. 
So the change in displacement is the displacement at the later time minus the displacement at the earlier time. And we can write that using the function in terms of the time elapsed using these two quantities in here. Again, how does that help? Well, let's carry on and see where it takes us. Here we've just written t plus delta t all squared out by expanding the brackets. And notice here that the kt squared at the start of the brackets uh, is cancelled out by the minus kt squared that came from the earlier time interval. So we have this expression here, which might not look too friendly, but if we put it into the expression for the gradient for delta x, we have that lump of algebra divided by the delta t that was always there. And the delta t's in the top part of that expression cancel out with delta t's at the bottom to give this thing, where we have a term that is constant, 2 times k times t, not delta t, that would, that, or a t plus delta t, but just t, the time that we've chosen, plus a part that does depend on delta t. Now you might think this isn't going to help us, because this is all we've done is express algebraically what we did on the previous slide, where we drew three tangents and shrank delta t. But that's OK, because here we can shrink delta t again. And what we do is we say we take a limit. So what's happening here is that in the limit, as delta t shrinks to zero, the term k delta t completely disappears. But the term 2kt does not. We call finding this gradient in the limit of an infinitesimal time interval differentiating. And so that we don't have to write out lim delta t to zero and then that thing, we invent a new notation and we call that dx by dt. So in this case, dx by dt, which we can call the derivative of x with respect to t, is equal to 2kt. And in this case, that's 2 multiplied by the value of k, which I mentioned earlier, and you might have forgotten, was 4.9, multiplied by 2, because we're interested in the point at which t equals 2 seconds, and we get 19.6 meters per second. So what we've done is we've found a way of calculating the gradient of the tangent at t equals 2 exactly without having to make approximations and without having to draw tangent lines. And that is pretty much the point of the technique called differentiation, which is a part of calculus.